In this movie, I'm going to attempt to run my early release on just Commodore hardware and all original hardware. I've disconnected my SD2 IEC and I have imaged the, uh, uh, the uh, D64 file onto a proper drive. What I have is uh, the Commodore connected to drive 8, the printer is drive 4, and I have the G-Link 232, it's inside that box right there. And that G-Link 232 is connected via serial to this uh, Yaitsu FT817. And that is connected to a uh, 2 meter 440 J pole on the, uh, on the roof of the house. So we're going to get started with this configuration. I know it's hard to uh, capture video of a screen like this without having some lines. I do apologize. I'm going to show you what's on the disc before we begin. And I have the file up top, so we're just going to load it. And we're going to run it. So here we have the uh, initial screen. Calibration file is not found, it's going to make a backup. It's going to dump the calibration data from the radio. Nothing on the radio uh, shows uh, communication through this port. There's, there's no uh, um, uh, special indication. Just uh, reading the content that comes back is what lets you know. Uh, right now, I do not have a new ink ribbon in my printer. I have an old ribbon that I just keep advancing as to not damage the heads. But just for this demonstration, we're going to print calibration. And the program will wait until everything's been printed and, and device number four is closed. Unfortunately, I can't really see a whole lot. When I get that new ribbon, this should be a lot more interesting. Right now I have VFOA on one of our local repeaters. I have VFOB set to APRS, so you can hear APRS traffic. APRS doesn't have any tone, any encoding, there's no shift. However, on this repeater, there is a positive shift and there is a tone. All right, finished, okay? So it's gonna start up. And you can see that we have 147, 120 with a positive tone, um, two meter band. And I have this S meter uh, in receive mode. It is the, uh, the S meter. And in transmit, it is the SWR that's reported by the radio. It's also worth noting that power is showing in receive mode what the power is configured to send high or low one through three. On transmit, Although it generally is the same value, if there was a high SWR, it'd be showing the actual transmit power as it was backed off. So, right here, we have 147, 120. If I were to go and change the VFO to VFO B, we could see that the VFO is reflected. And if we wait, it probably shouldn't be very long before we hear something from EPRS. And 
and you can see we're just picking up APRS traffic that's all we're getting but if we switch to the other VFO we're on our home repeater Let's see if anybody's there KJ4 TLB there may not be anybody responding I use the video memory for validating data because it's easy to see it move around every time I work with a new bit. So you can see the power changes, but it's actually staying the same because there's no need to cut it back. It's from transmit to receive, squelch, and while I hold it down, you can see what the uh, SWR is. I have to actually calibrate this. It's off by one bar. It shows one bar too many. So this is what we have running right now. Subsequently, the next time the program is started, since we already did our calibration, as you'll see here, it is safe to file called calibration. And if I start up the program again, let's start up just as before, but we'll forego the initial uh, saving and printing of the calibration because it will check for the file. And the file is found, it proceeds right to the program itself. So the calibration doesn't have to be done every time, it just has to exist on the disk once.